Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Collaboration is the word today. So to me, it's rather important to grasp this whole concept of collaboration because there are so many specialisms, different departments and some people with so many backgrounds and different experiences. If we want to achieve our objectives or deliver our projects, we need to collaborate in today's workplace. From an SEO perspective, there's always this topic that never gets sold, the collaboration between SEOs and other marketers for, for that matter and, and developers. Yeah. For that, we've got here Sai Jobling. Hello, Sai. Hi there. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on today. He's an engineer, an engineering manager at ISOS, 20 odd years in engineering, and he is going to tell us to avoid when we want to collaborate with with other with with developers and engineers so that we can carry out our projects. Hi Simon. Hey Monty, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Cool. Good. So please tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, I'll try and keep it short as well. So as you say at the start, actually, I've been in tech for quite a while, probably about 20 odd years now. I'm now an engineering manager at a large fashion organization that's a lot of people know around the globe now, thankfully. But through those years, I've also been an engineer. So I did that for about 10, 15 years and then transitioned to management in the last sort of 10 years. So I've got both sides of the angle to this conversation, actually, and what works, what doesn't work, what pain points you might see as well as an engineer. But yeah, I was a front-end web engineer for a long time, full-stack engineer as well. So it wasn't just purely front-end. I was doing a lot of back-end background application stuff as well. And with all those sort of projects, we've always had to consider SEO and marketing and all the other extra bits that don't get built as the core application or website you're building. So yeah, been around the road, road, road a bit and seen some challenging times, but also got some good ideas on what might help. Perfect. And we are looking forward to hearing all those because there's always a little bit of friction, which I guess also comes from the point of view of the organization. So depending on how siloed the organization is, the more or less collaborative experience you will get, actually get. But it is also true that sometimes we just don't take into account what engineers do think. We just tend to actually come to you with our list of recommendations or not other recommendations, more like things to ask you to do. And we don't even ask you what your opinion is, perhaps. So what, what do you yeah. think about all this? What's your experience? Yeah, again, I think every engineer is slightly different. Not, you can't just say, oh, just do it a certain way. And as you say, everyone's slightly different in how they collaborate and prefer to work. I found more recently that engineers like to own the problem more than just being told what to do. So I actually, rather than giving the requirements as this is what I want you to tick box through, more like this is what I'm struggling to achieve. Can you help? Because that gives them a bit more control and responsibility as they do the work. They don't sort of go, oh, well, I've done what they've asked me to do. And that's it. Let's see. I hope that's what you want. And then you find out later on the line. No, you didn't quite interpret my instructions very well, or there's certain requirements that were missed from those original requests. But by posing the problem to them first, they can start discussing those solutions with you earlier on. And then that could give you a chance to correct or actually think in a different way, potentially, because you, you've come in with some suggestions that might not actually satisfy your needs either. That's the one that I like to see more of. But well, I'm not saying every engineer fits into that category and especially depends on where you work. If you're working with consultancies or contractors, they might prefer the kind of just give me the requirements and leave me alone for a few five days, which is absolutely understandable. It's just when I've worked within an organization for so long now, I see that the, the problem solving requirements are more effective and impactful than the requirements based approach. Mm. I've had... My experience is rather varied, having worked with so many developers. I think I have worked with developers a lot more than I have worked with other marketers. And it seems rather varied. Some of them like context. Um, exactly. And some others just like to know what to do, rather than saying, oh, we've got this problem, this other, et cetera, et cetera. However, I am not sure, I am never sure how to hit the right balance between the right context and just asking them what to do. And this is what they want. 
what are your recommendations regarding that? Yeah, again, like I say, I'm, I'm really talking from my personal experiences. Yeah. I've been working in an organization for quite a long time now. But going previous to all that, when it was more consultancy based, it was more like, like you say, I think making sure the detail is in there and the context, which is key. You know, you can sort of say, well, look, based, based on this scenario, I really want this to happen, this to happen, this to happen, this to happen. Is this possible? You know, as well, rather than just sort of going, this is what I need, do it. It's like, can you just validate that this is even achievable or, again, how long this might take? Because you, you're on a budget normally, sort of say, well, actually, I'll need this doing in three weeks and I've only got a budget for four weeks. So if it's going to creep over, then I'm going to be in a bit of a problem here. But actually, if you go back to the, the, the requirements being quite clear and very yeah. specific rather than fluffy, that's less like you say, <laughs> make a change, create this page, do and you're like, oh, page about what you know and what kind of detail do you need in that page do you want images do you want do you how do you want to organize this content is there certain requirements from like the, the ordering of the elements rather than just what's in them and i think giving the engineer a chance to ask those questions in, a, in an initial briefing call you know yeah. it doesn't have to be that long but ideally like half an hour I mean, similar to what we do now when i'm working with groups of engineers they will generally book in like a refinement call to talk through requirements from a, a BA or a, a product owner or a business analyst to really understand those requirements that have been written down really well. But even still, there might be some missing points that you kind of need to just elaborate on with a few extra bullet points under each heading. Mm-hmm. Right. So to you, how does a geared ticket look like? Is there a kind of a structure that you prefer or you favor? Over others? I, yeah, I, I think I've seen this evolve over time. Like you say, you can really keep it simple, like a Trello card, you know, with just some bullet points is sometimes enough or even a checklist within that, you know, card. But then as you can get more versatile requirements, then you might want to give it a bit of extra structure with um, actual given when then scenarios. So you can actually outline, you know, if I'm in this situation and this happens, what what is the actual outcome? You could also think about some proper user story formatting, which is quite a common agile practice now if you do Scrum or Kanban. And I mm-hmm. think that if you can define what a good story looks like with those engineers, I found like, again, sort of talking around some of the the, the happy paths and then the unhappy paths and then some of the yeah. exceptions that you might not consider. That Again, if you're building something, that makes it a lot easier. If you're doing sort of very simple content, it's, it, it don't necessarily need that detail, but you do need to understand what you're trying to get across. So again, mm-hmm. just being very clear and specific with, you know, nicely organized bullet points or sequential lists, even samples, you know, just like if it, what exactly is the content you want in here with the, the languages that are needed for the each for variation as well. That is very interesting. I remember, Simon, last time I tried to do this, and the engineer mm-hmm. came back to me and said, this is all too fluffy. I have no idea what you are talking about here. <laughs> like, okay. And I had put very clear the context or right. thought it was very clear the context. So this is what I'm trying to achieve. And this is the problem that I w- I'm having. Perhaps not right. with so much detail, but I then, I then said, well, this is what I think it will work. And then still they come back to me and said, I have no idea what you're talking about here. <laughs> can is we it discuss through the conversation that they're do you, do you is it very email based though or is it kind of conversational like we are having a call now or is there a mixed kind of arrangement to how you provide that content in this particular case it was via email because it was remote right. however i have tried to do the same one thing that i try to do always is not to have many meetings because it's not a good idea. <laughs> it never is. But whenever whenever I have had the, a similar situation with, with developers, it has normally been like more mixed, but talking to them in person. And I think they did appreciate the fact somebody actually went down to their department and talked to them in person because not everyone did. Hmm. I think building that relationship is really key, though. As, as you say, like if you just fire an email to someone asking for something, it rarely gets a good result, you know, in that, in that format. I find that if you, even if you sort of kind of say, kind of book in 15 minutes, just to explain my scenario first and then just check how you want to receive this, these instructions, because that some people might say, send me a, a Notion doc, send me a Trello card, send me, let's get onto a Slack channel and just start talking about it there. And that just gives them the comfort to know that they're going to work in a more 
suitable way to them there for style because everyone's slightly different some people are like i hate meetings i don't want to be on a video call forget that you know just send me voice notes if that's but if you want to talk about it i'm like sure that's fine but at least you're required you're sending the requirements in their preferred style and format yeah that's that's right i tend to use jira and i know jira has sure. its own way its own language so to speak right do you mm. i mean you mentioned trello earlier and i just wonder whether more complex systems like jira are normally favored by developers would you say I've, yeah i think more versatile solutions like jira are better for you know bigger projects that are ongoing as well because you, you can sort of organize that by like epic feature story task and you get that true hierarchy that you need for really detailed requirements mm -hmm. I've, the, the the problem i found with jira is the setup and getting it right in the first place because yeah. it's quite an investment especially if you've got a very quick projects or a short project you're thinking, is it really worth setting up a whole Jira project for this? Because, yeah, they've got the templates out of the box, but it's never quite how you want to work normally. If you can keep it simple, Kanban, which is like backlog, to do, done, fine. That's fine. That works great. But if you want to think sprints and iterations, you need to really organize that stuff as well. So it's not very straightforward. Um, mm -hmm. I've mentioned Trello because it's simple and it's very quick to set one up. Again, they've got templates and it tends to have a similar stru structure in there for like, you know, in a high level card with checklists. But again, you, you, I think working to the preference of the, the developer or whoever you're working with, just find out what their preferred tools are because most of them fall into a similar category and they're quite commonly available now or quite relatively cheap as well. You don't, you don't have to go too expensive because I know Jira can get quite expensive on the larger organizations. So now this is a very good topic. This is a very, not a topic, not a very good advice. Not every single developer is the same. Because nope. <laughs> there's something very interesting when I when I started in digital is that everybody tended to tag people in different groups, and so they used to they used to tell me, well, these are the developers, these are the marketers, these are the finance people, they are the, 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 the. So everybody was, was kind of compartmented, siloed somehow. Mm -hmm. and, and that implied that everybody liked the same type of technologies, the same type of working, et cetera, et cetera. Then when I, I started to work with them a bit more in depth, I realized that everyone was very, very, very different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, this is, and this is what I was trying to get at, perhaps that, that everyone yeah, is different. So you have to build up this this collaboration, this relationship, so that the projects are can actually be delivered and it can be done in different ways as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Side. And again, if you are working across multiple departments and silos, like you mentioned at the start, I think it's key to just make we have that initial kickoff discussion as with the key people across those silos. So again, you know, if, if you have got a financer, a, a, you know, a, a, a security person, whatever department they're in, just literally pull out a key person from that department to kind of go, can you just be my point of call for this piece of work? I want to just get everyone on the same page at the start, literally just get your brief doc out and talk through it one by one and say, right, where do you want to talk about this as a group? You know, it could be email, which is fine, you know, but if there's a Slack channel or a Jira project that they've already got, great, use that instead, because that would be your main point going forward. Mm -hmm. And then and you just make sure if there's any concerns, like you say, everyone's definitely going, oh, Engineers hate Jira as a default, right? They don't generally like it, but they get that it's probably the best tool for the job, especially when it's got all the clever API connections with other, you know, GitHub repos and stuff like that. <laughs> That's very um, interesting. Actually, Jira not liked by engineers. I would have thought that Jira was actually built for engineers by engineers. Originally it was, I think because it's, it's one of them classics, it was built by engineers for engineers. It's ballooned into this enterprise mess. Or like, it's, it's so complicated to get work in. And, Engineers just like simplicity generally, right? They don't want the, all that extra stuff. I, I tarnish all engineers with the same brush. I shouldn't do that. But it's just the thing you hear every time. No one likes Jira. I'm like, I know, but we all know how to use it, right? <laughs> I have to say I used to like Jira. But I also used to like so, it because of the complexity to me was a challenge, a positive mm -hmm. challenge. <laughs> and knowing how to use it. And I, I'm like you, I, I, I got used to using Jira and I found it really useful and all, it was really nice. It's, it's so extendable. You could do so much with it. And if you knew how to play it to your advantage, it's perfect. But I think a lot of people are just like, I haven't got the time for this. I don't want to think about that. I just want to know what I've got to do and get on with it. <laughs> 
know exactly because at the end of the day we all want to kind of achieve our tasks complete them and then forget yeah. about them move on to the next one so yeah i mean if if, if jira or any other, other technology gets in the way then it doesn't mm. make any sense exactly it's using tools for the right reasons you know i mentioned slack a few times in trello it's, it's just make sure you keep you're using it for its purpose not trying to shoehorn another process into those tools because that's when it becomes a mess and people get frustrated or you as an organizer just kind of go oh, i don't even know how to do this anymore i've, I've lost track of what i'm trying to achieve <laughs> So moving on, you mentioned earlier that you prefer having this discussion, early discussions, you know, to discuss point by point what the requir requirements are, et cetera, et cetera. How far would you like to, or do you normally like to get involved into every single project? As a, an engineer manager or as an engineer? Probably both. Okay, just curious. So but to be fair, I think from an engineer's perspective, it's good to know you don't want to go into too much detail, but you just need to understand what you're trying to achieve. Like I mentioned at the start, like what what the problems are going to go after. And, you know, if it's talking SEO and marketing, got terrible rankings in Google, we need to make sure we're on the first page and I've got some ideas on how to do that. And then just get some validation from the engineers saying, just give me your thoughts from an engineer. They don't need to know the answers, but they can at least, uh, you know, share what they're thinking at that stage and say, right, take it away. Come back to me in how long you need. Ideally, not too long, but obviously give you time to think and really process what you've got to do. Have that conversation with your teammates, if you've got any as well, okay. because obviously you're not going to have everyone in the same room. And that's the other thing I just need to probably call out at that point. Don't bring everyone to that call, that initial discussion, because that's just going to be too many people. And it's going to be like designed by committee, which is never going to be that effective. Actually bring it, bring, just bring key people that can take it away and have a really good conversation about what they're trying to achieve. But yeah, I, th I think you've got to be careful not to go on too long. Cause some people can say, I want a day long kickoff session. I'm like, really? You know, for a yeah. massive project, maybe for a simpler requirement or a very kind of clear outline, maximum half a day. You know, you want to try and keep it down to a couple of hours, ideally, mm. even just half an hour, potentially, depending on the scope of what you're trying to achieve. But you just don't want to make sure it gets too complicated and blown out of proportion and make sure the scope is really clear as well. So you're not sort of saying, we, we've got months to work on this no 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 we've got to get this done within the next couple of weeks so we need to think mvp simplest possible solution that we can just get out there live and start to see the results straight away i only asked you this because i am a very big fan of getting everyone involved sure into everything that they need to be get, to be getting involved in so i've worked in very complex projects people didn't have much faith in the delivery of those projects we finally i finally managed to do this and i remember wanting to wanting everybody to get involved in the discussions and particularly at the end the in the final presentation where i would actually say well this is your contribution to your to the to the project not everyone appreciated that Mm, it's, it's hard balance to get right i've seen mixed results in this you know sort of going i want everyone involved from the start so you can see the achievements at the end but then not everyone wants to be involved at the start either so maybe it's worth just sense checking do you want to be involved i'm inviting you but don't feel obliged you know you, you are welcome i want everyone to feel invited to this project this is what I'm, you know you're going to be involved somehow but then some maybe junior members of, of the team that you're working with like I don't want to be on a conversation yeah. with about these sort of things. Why? I'm like, yeah, what am I going to do? I'll just give me the stuff to the code. I'm, I'll, I'll learn. I'm going to enjoy that part. It's great. <laughs> Whereas some of the more senior ones might be the opposite. They're going, I'm sick of meetings. I don't want to be in them all. So I'll, I'll send the junior because he can learn something from it or something like that instead. But it's just asking and inviting to say the inv invitation is not obligatory. It's just an offer, you know, and then we will celebrate at the end. I'm going to pull everyone together when we've completed this to make sure that you get the recognition you deserve for it as well. Yeah. And from that perspective, working with an engineering manager or maybe a PM, because sometimes engineering managers are called PMs. <laughs> and this, yeah. this is my liaison point, basically. And whenever I haven't had that, it has been a lot more complicated to know who I needed to talk to, mm. who is more in the lead, just so, so to speak, in that, sure. in that team. Uh, that makes sense. Who to it's, invite yeah, in the meetings. <laughs> uh, yeah, and what, what I've tend to do in that, in that, sorry, in, in that situation is to, if, you, if you're talking to the project manager or the engineering manager directly, just ask them who's leading this, 
And then you got you can, you can say, look, when I'm not available, you can go straight to them. Or if there's a specific conversation you want to have, don't hold back. Just loop me into any comms that, so I've got a visibility of what's happening. Uh, ideally, have it in a group space. You know, again, I've talked about Slack a few times or what or Teams, whatever. Just have it in that open space, and I'll, I can just catch up later or use it as a reference point if I need to. I don't want to be the bottleneck to this conversation. I want to make sure that you have direct access to the people that are writing the code or doing the work for you. Yeah, because basically what us project managers want to make sure is that the right people are invited so that they actually get to know what's going on and what they need to do. And they can de definitely cascade that into the, their teams so that people know what they have to do as well. So if I'm inviting somebody, I think it's leading or because I've been told it's leading and then that person doesn't have the responsibility. Well, they don't have the responsibility to tell others what they need to do. And that is a blocker for every single project. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult balance to get right because not everyone wants to be in those conversations and have that direct access. Some prefer it. And a lot of project managers like to have the control over what's going on. And that's that's probably the, the difficult bit to get right because you can't control everything, unfortunately, as much as you think no, you might not. be able to. You know, <laughs> but it, it, it definitely comes down to that. And it generally comes down to, you know, timelines and budgets because that's what they've been tasked to look after, you know, as part of the remit. But equally, that can actually add extra costs and complications if you are becoming a bottleneck all the time. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for pipelines or backlogs and everything. I, With experience, what I have learned is that everybody else is very busy too. Mm -hmm. It means that... They, I might have my requirements, but they also have other people's requirements and their own requirements from their own team. So it means that everybody's got a very long list of things to do. And so getting pipelines, getting things that is done always is about knowing what other people might have as a priority as well. And that has been a real problem yeah. from an SEO perspective. So what are your recommendations for that? Yeah, again, that's a difficult one to get right because if you can't share your backlog, you know, with your clients, for example, oh. because it's, there's a lot of other clients involved, you, don't, you need to have to be careful what you share. I think if you can, it, it comes down to priority and, you know, value. I think generally it's like, okay. what is the most valuable piece of work to do right now, whether it's for you or for someone else, and just being transparent to an extent, to sort of go, well, I will look after that once I finish this other piece because it's critical. I've got a bug in a production system that I need to address. Whereas another one would be like, oh, actually, yeah, that's that's definitely more valuable for you because I can see the cost to that. Um, right. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tricky one to get right, I think. So I think maybe you, you can actually say this is right or wrong, but from, from the very beginning, you kind of start saying, or just thinking about who is the leader, project leader from a developer's perspective and establish what their backlog is and where your requirements can actually fit in from the very beginning. Would you say that's right? I think so, yeah. I think identifying the project lead, identify the project manager and the, the communication style between the two because they are going to be slightly different and what, what they want to do. But yeah, be, being as open as you possibly can on like your organization and how you can, mm. how you organize your workload. Because you could be that you just set a load of requirements at the start of the week, leave them to it for a week and come back on a Friday. So many people go, no, we're checking every morning or, or twice a day. I don't know what what is your feedback mechanism like within your organization as well as with me as a, as a client. So just, just understand that how their workflow is is mm -hmm. really critical to that as well. Oh uh, yeah, workflows because uh, that relates to QA processes as well. And uh, I I know that a lot of the times it's mea culpa too. I haven't asked about their QA processes, so mm. there, there's there's a key there's a key part as well because if you don't really know how they validate fixes or bugs or anything and then mm. you don't really know how to estimate time properly either exactly and it's all, that part is normally neglected or underestimated how much time is needed to do the, the uat the testing the qa whatever how you want to phrase it but then again i've got a lot of engineers that work they bring testing into their development process so it's you know they write the test up front they make sure that it validates the test before they ship it and it goes through the the technical pipeline to, to production so, but if you don't know that that's how they work, then that's not factored into those earlier costs or on those later costs or however you want to break down the, the differences in, in how you deliver. 
No, no, definitely. So what I would like to know is what are your main pain points, your main complaints when you deal with, I don't know, with other specialisms like uh, business analysts or SEOs or any other, any other specialisms? I think the, 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 the main pain point I've seen is earlier, there's early discussions, there's early kickoff calls. They're, not, they're just not happening in the right way or they're not happening at all. And I've, I've, I've seen, are you, are you inviting the right people to those conversations, as we said earlier? That, that's been the biggest challenge for me because a lot of BAs like to think they know it all sometimes, mm. but actually without talking to an engineer first to validate a few things, that can be critical. Also, if you've got any dependencies that you need to consider or any, any th third-party silos or whatever it is, mm. make sure that they're part of those earlier conversations rather than being right at the end and go, wait, have we even considered this yet? Because that's, that's the bit that normally gets neglected from my perspective. And that's, that's through history, not just more recently. You know, it's, it's proper. It's knowing the right balance, though, in which, how much detail to go into. Because you don't want to tell people how to do a job. You want to ask them how to do it. That, that's the key to me is like making sure that they're not being told what to do. Mm. You're actually asking, is this the right thing to do? How should I do this? I've got an idea, but I want to hear your thoughts first. And that gives that engineer or that developer a bit more empowerment and to own the work properly. Any other recommendations, basically, to, so that so that people don't really get on your toes? <laughs> or and, to... and yeah, I think the communication. You know, it tends to be certain expectations on response times with messaging, with like comms, because you can sort of say, "Well, we only converse by email." By the mm -hmm. way, I'm I'm in a different time zone, so you won't hear from me till certain time in the afternoon, mm -hmm. your time setting expectations on like your response times to comms because I think that's one of the biggest challenges I've seen across many organizations it's it's difficult to get right but then you, if you don't know their own scenarios it could be personal needs you could say well actually I don't work in the afternoon because it's too hot and I know that's something that's real in Europe right now you know you, you need to sort of go well 12 till 4 siesta time I'll be back on it from 4 p.m and I'll respond to any requirements at that point just but being open about that from the start so people can actually be ready and sort of go well I'll send the email now and I'll get the response tonight and I'll pick it up tomorrow. At least I'm, I'm prepared for that sort of feedback loop. Mm -hmm. So your main recommendations is it starts from the very beginning with a kickoff meeting so that we know exactly what to do, who <laughs> deals with what, et cetera, et cetera, which is perfectly fine to me because this is what as project managers do we need to do in the very first place, getting people involved so there are the right people involved at all times. And then the second pain point for you is communication, clear communication and expectations. As expectations, as response yeah. Time. Yeah, and, and details like that, you know, how I prefer to communicate. If I'm sending a long email and that's not your preferred style, would you prefer a call? Sure, let me know now though because I don't want to get into that habit before I know that it's not your favoured style. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So thank you so much. And lastly, what I would like to know is what do you use to switch off from all engineering and all project management, et cetera, et cetera? I know you've got your own podcast, Make Life Work. And uh, so yep. apart from that, what do you do? Tell us a bit more. I th there's a lot of podcasting involved to turn off, actually. It's, it's my happy place. So whether it's making or listening, you know, I just like the podcast world. I, I like to learn what's happening in the podcasting world. There's a lot of new changes coming through now. So I do, I do follow a lot of that and tech podcasts just to understand what's happening beyond what we do as on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a lot of big changes coming now with AI and chat GPT and, you know, what that future means. That's the stuff that really kind of gets my attention now. I love, I love the potential, but I'm also mindful that it can cause a lot of, hesitation and anxiety as well in, in in the wider industry tech are excited others aren't but i'm like you need to just embrace this this is the future use it to your advantage don't you see it as a as a, a blocker to your career or your industry just use it to your advantage now absolutely that's that's my take embrace it in the first place see whether you can actually use it to your own advantage or whether this is something you you need to learn more about it or maybe perhaps perhaps other people are more suitable for for this and maybe you can actually take things from another angle etc cetera, et cetera. but you need to get to know them in the first place yep yeah, it's, it's very exciting times ahead but it's very i think so, people are very nervous which i get and understand why you, you there's, there's risk averse people but I'm like, hey, it's here. Just know how to use it to your advantage and be careful how you do it. Because otherwise, uncertainty becomes too unbearable. 
That's why they have exactly. found out. <laughs> yep. But yeah, that, down, my downtime is worrying about AI. <laughs> I, I thank you so much for coming on today. Thank oh, you so much for me. giving us your perspective, your viewpoint from a developer's point of view, as or engineer's point of view, as to what your pain points are, your main complaints, and what people need to avoid um, to collaborate properly with your departments. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me.